Good evening and thank you. So today I'll be talking about the benefits um, or comparing really extracorporeal anastomosis versus uh, intracorporeal anastomosis. I have no disclosures. So I think it's obvious and uh, what we've been talking about and just looking at um, our practices and how we've uh, evolved that we've made tremendous strides over the past uh, 20 to 30 years going from open and large um, incisions to the uh, advent of laparoscopy and then of course more recently the advent of the robot and with that of course comes smaller incisions and better cosmesis and just more involved um, in advanced uh, technology and approaches to our patients. So you've seen my colleagues have been uh, spending uh, a lot of time talking about intracorporeal anastomosis, so we'll go ahead and talk and a comparison between the two. Uh, are you in or are you out? So here's just some pictures of extracorporeal. And so uh, way a long time ago when I started my practice, I, like this here, showed that 95% of um, colorectal anastomoses were performed in an extracorporeal manner, uh, laparoscopically. Um, and it was because we found that the intracorporeal anastomosis, as my colleagues had mentioned, um, was demanding. It did dem um, require uh, good suturing skills. And for me, especially in the beginning, I was not as slick as my colleagues. So it was quite a bit of a learning curve um, to so laparoscopically, and it did take some time and add to the overall uh, OR time, um, et cetera. This picture, there's intracorporeal anastomosis. So um, when we do, looking at laparoscopic uh, intracorporeal anastomosis, we found initially um, that it did improve significantly com when compared to the extracorporeal uh, anastomosis, reduced length of stay, quicker return of bowel function, um, of course, less wound infections, um, less pain, which was thought to be uh, related to traction on the mesenteric um, access, uh, access especially if for the obese patient or patients that had a foreshortened mesentery like we see with um, uh, IBD and so forth, also less bleeding. So again, initially, when we first started doing this laparoscopically, we saw that m most of them were done extracorporeally. It can be done intracorporeally, but at that time, not many people were comfortable doing it. Just again, because of the skill set that was required. Um, we didn't notice at the beginning that the extraction size of, of the incision was that much different, especially if you had a bulky tumor. Either way, you had to get it out somehow. So the incision size wasn't particularly um, uh, different. But at that time, we didn't have that much data. And so after that then came a ton of uh, research and tons of data that was published. Here, my colleagues in Mount Sinai published this uh, uh, paper several years ago looking at a comparison of the intracorporeal versus the extracorporeal anastomosis in the laparoscopic setting. So this is still uh, all laparoscopic and they showed again significant benefits um, between the intracorporeal over uh, the extracorporeal and all the things that I had mentioned in the previous slide. They were so motivated they went ahead and published a whole book about it um, to talk about and describe um, how to go ahead and proceed with the intracorporeal anastomosis. Um, for, minimally, for the minimally invasive surgeon. Again, more data, more studies came out looking at intracorporeal anastomosis versus extracorporeal. And we look at this diagram here that actually randomized a patient. So you had patients that were randomized to the intracorporeal leg versus the extracorporeal leg. And it broke it down then um, in base of their, uh, their post-operative uh, findings. So you found that with the intracorporeal arm, uh, there was a less uh, paralytic ileus. Um, there were less, uh, actually, excuse me, the seromas again were about the same because the, they wasn't a, um, Huge difference in the size at some, you had to extract the, uh, the uh, specimen. But there was lower incidence of gastrointestinal bleeding, um, and they even mentioned uh, lower incidence of acute renal failure. And again, here in this particular slide, you could look at wound infections, um, and again, the paralytic ileus, which is significantly lower in the intracorporeal arm. Again, lesser uh, chances of anastomotic leak when you did it intracorporeally, uh, and the numbers were just significantly improved when you look on the intracorporeal arm versus that extracorporeal arm. 
So they went ahead and they listed some of those advantages and disadvantages of intracorporeal. So again, all the things that were mentioned, uh, less ilio, uh, ileus, fast return of bowel function, um, and then they looked at the uh, disadvantages was again the skill set and adding time uh, to your operation because you had to get comfortable suturing uh, laparoscopically, which as we saw in some of the earlier videos, is not particularly easy. It does take uh, some practice and repetition. And then the people that were, you know, still uh, big fans of the extracorporeal uh, anastomosis uh, talked about how you can actually palpate your anastomosis. Um, you know, you had visualization, obviously, and, and again, you just bypass the, um, the concept of uh, the suturing. But then again, when you look at the disadvantages of the extracorporeal anastomosis, you talk about um, twisting of the mesentery or bleeding of the mesentery or traction of the mesentery, and these are all things that uh, I personally had seen in my practice uh, when I had first started. And then the robot arrives, and I think most of us said, you know, hallelujah, because then it made the whole concept of suturing very, very easy. And here are just some pictures of, again, just intracorporeal anastomosis, and that this was big. I mean, I, I know for me, it, it completely changed my practice from essentially abandoning laparoscopy and doing everything uh, robotically, and um, all of the anastomosis are safely done intracorporeally. Again, because of, like Dr. Asani mentioned, um, just the, the mobility of the robot and the 360 degrees and so forth. So then we started now looking at, well, what about robotics versus laparoscopic colectomy and just still doing intracorporeal anastomosis? And it showed that with a robotic colectomy versus a laparoscopic um, colectomy, the functional postoperative outcomes and length of stay were similar, but the robotic um, arm had longer operative time. But again, when we're talking about cancers, they were actually able to harvest um, a higher number of lymph nodes in the beginning. Further studies looked at it, uh, robotic-assisted intracorporeal versus robotic-assisted um, and doing the anastomosis, um, extracorporeal, excuse me, extracorporeal anastomosis, forgive me, uh, in the laparoscopic setting. Um, and again, they found that the robotic arm had uh, fewer anastomotic uh, uh, complications as well as wound complications, and uh, they favored the use of intracorporeal robotic-assisted um, anastomosis, particularly on the right side. And then this chart here just kind of summarizes looking at uh, the robotic approach for intracorporeal versus extracorporeal. And again, you can see significant improvement um, in uh, the outcomes. It does take a little bit uh, longer, obviously, if you're going to do it and so intracorporeally, uh, but it, you did see a significant, um, excuse me, a relatively uh, decrease in uh, length of stay. Um, and again, all of the benefits that we had mentioned earlier. And like Dr. Asani had mentioned, continuing progress and continued advancements in our approach, even with robotics, uh, through nose or NICE, uh, natural orifice specimen extraction, whether you do it through um, the rectum or whether you do it through a vaginal cuff, these are always, particularly for our obese patients, uh, to avoid an incision completely. You can just go ahead and extract, do the, the entire operation, extract through the rectum or extract through um, the vaginal cuff, and then avoid the wound infections and the seromas and having to deal with um, you know, a thick panis and, and all the complications that can be um, associated with that. So I was lucky because I think my colleagues had done a wonderful job in talking about the uh, different approaches to intracorporeal anastomosis. But in conclusion, overall, when we look, compared intracorporeal versus extracorporeal, we saw that uh, it had better results overall. Uh, and then when we added the use of the robot um, with intracorporeal anastomosis, it showed even better results than the laparoscopic approach. It did reduce the length of stay. It did have a quicker return of bowel function uh, for patients that were um, operated on for cancer. They showed a higher uh, number of lymph nodes that were harvested, less wound infections in post-op ileus, and then again, you didn't have to deal with pulling on the mesentery if you had to deal with the thick panis in the obese patient or a foreshortened mesentery in IBD patients um, and less bleeding overall. And that's it. Thank you.